Well, we're here at the wonderful Wold Farm Fishery and we're going to find out what's best, whether it's natural or pellets. Well, my plan of attack is to fish two lines, probably at two o'clock uh, and 10 o'clock. I'm gonna go up to 13 meters. So it's, it's, it's quite different. We've probably got about five foot, I would have thought out there, four and a half, five foot, nice depth. And I'm gonna feed one line with a natural bait and dead reds, and the other line just with expanders. Uh, sorry, just with micros. But to fish an expander over the top, a formal expander, and double dead red maggot, over the natural ground bait and just to see which is best. It's warmed up a little bit, we may have some trouble from carp but it'll be interesting, interesting just to see which line's the best and what we catch on each line. Just for you guys watching, thinking when you go to a, um, a commercial to fish for silverfish, what is the best approach? Because sometimes you just don't know until the day. I've just started, I've cut in two balls on the line I'm starting on now of the ground bait and dead reds and I've cut some micros on the other line. I've put, tightened, put a ball in, I've squeezed them together because they will just um, split up on the bottom but just to take them down then just a few loose ones. And I'm starting on this line first of all because I've put the ground bait in it's active I just want to see if the fish comes to that activity straight away. So I'm starting on that, that line first with two dead reds. But I've got a little pole pot on this kit, which I wouldn't be using. But the reason I put it on is, when I come in, I can put a few micros in there and feed the other line. So I'm keeping that one, I'm nurturing that one to go on to. Good little tip that, because otherwise, I'm not keeping feed going in there. Although I don't want feed going in there, because this is ground bait with dead max on the bottom. With that one, I just want to try and attract fish just to see if the pellets attracts too many carp or we do get the silverfish on it. And all I'll do, I'll just top this up. Like I say, probably every 20 minutes, I'll put a little ball in just to keep it going. But I'll fish this line for probably half hour before I have a look on that line. Oh, there we are now. That may be a carp, but... And it just buried, but it might not be. I just start to see a few more bubbles coming up, but I don't think we're carp. But this may be one. If it's a carp, it's a common carp, but I think it's a good skimmer. I just noticed a few more bubbles just coming up that didn't tell me they were carp bubbles. And then it's, it's a proper buried, and we go on, this took about, I don't know, 12, 13 minutes. No, it is a carp. And it's a mirror carp, I've got that wrong. Very lethargic though, obviously if they've been cold. Oh, the fish are absolutely freezing. Beautiful mirror. It's like a block of ice, absolutely freezing it is. 
Well, I've been fishing about half an hour now, and I've had a small carp, a couple of little roach, fell look to carp. There's some fish down there, but they're just not sort of settled. Whether there's some carp putting them off into feeding. So I'm going to cup another ball of ground bait in there now, come off this line, and go on the line I've been prepping with the uh, micros, with expander on there. You can see if that's a better response. It's a little tench. A lovely little fish. A little bar of soap. Beautiful little tench. Lovely. That's not what we come for. Oh, he's double figures. Right in the tail. Look at him. A beauty. Right, now as I've played that carp for quite some time, I'm now going to cut some micros in on the line I've had just come off and cup a small ball of ground bait in and go then straight back over the, the ground bait line, which I was fishing. But I put a ball... Only a small ball. Got quite a few reds in. Besides a little tangerine. I'll put that in over the ground bait line first, then cut some micros in and then go straight over the ground bait. I told us if carp are gonna feed, they're gonna nudge the silvers out on either line, but Got to keep working those two lines. And I'll squeeze them right close together so they go down. Well, I'll try it again with the double red, but another little tip, if you do experience that, that you're getting <laughs> too many carp as I am, although I've put reds, dead reds and ground bait on this line, it's made worth just trying, although I ain't fed any micros there, try an expander on the hook. Now that can work. You don't feed any micros, carry on normal feeding, but just use an expander on the hook can work. There's a lot, well, a lot of small fish there, a little tiny roach. So I'll do this guy, just try an expander on the hook and I'm going to feed the other line. There are, now is that one or is it a carp? Have we got our first skim or is it a carp? No, it's a little carp. Oh no, it's not. There you are. 
skimmer, first one. So it definitely tells when they're down there because they're shoalfish. There we are, first one. It's probably two, two and a half pound, lovely fish. But that tells me that they're down there. The trouble is the carp are feeding and they're just nestling in and probably just spoiling it a little bit. I'll give it another 10 minutes down there. But that was on an expander, so let's put another expander on. There we are, I think that's another one. This way is, that was a lovely bite. That's definitely a skimmer. Yeah, another carp. Thought just like a skimmer when I hooked it. Take your time with them, because the harder you pull, the harder they will pull, but they're very lethargic. They're so very cold. Yeah, we're a car. They're just pushing the, the skimmers out, though. They're just bullying them, I think. And they're definitely down there, definitely. Well, the two rigs I've been using, I set up a 4B14, one of my MP1s, and a 4B16, because when I put the 4B14 in, I thought that's a little bit deep, and sometimes I can spread the bulk out on either of my rigs, but with the depth I thought I'd better get a 4B16 out, because I want to fish a bulk taking it straight down, because I don't want to catch little tiny roach. I'm trying to target the skimmers, tench, hybrids, like the better fish, um, and try and avoid the carp. I've got 016, Air Power Micron mainline to 012 at length, one of their new pre tied hooks. Um, I've got a bulk, which is six inches from the hook. It's above on the main line on the 016, it's not a shot on the hook length. So if I lose the hook length, I could just put one straight on and got a uh, muck around putting shot on um, or anything. Um, but I've just kept them both as a bulk and I've fished the 4B16 all the time on both lines. Reason being because I wanted to go down. There isn't any, I'm not getting, I'm getting odd small roach, um, but it's taking it through them. But there's no better roach to be had on the drop anyway. And the skimmers are definitely downstairs. They're not, um, they're not like on the drop. They're that last couple of foot of water. Well, there's clearly a lot of fish on the ground bait line. It's much better than the pellet line. The pellet line, I've had a small tench, a couple of roach and some missed bites, maybe small fish. But and I think I might have had one small carp, but on my ground bait line with a dead maggot, it's unreal. There's fish there all the time. I get little nudges and like line indications and that. And we see I failed at some carp. So what I'm gonna do now is take six inches off. Just to see, I'm just thinking through my own thoughts and knowledge I've gathered over the years that sometimes they are above the water breeding. They're not on the bottom racing around. I just wonder, if we can nick a couple that way until they properly feed. They just dance around, maybe the carp are down, they don't really want to go down, but they're just swimming in and out and just grabbing little bits that are down there. Because I'm not loosening, it's only anything that gets flicked up off the bottom by the tails and that. So take six inches off and let's see what happens. I definitely would have had some indications by now with six inches on, so it, it may work, but it's worth a try just to see. There's plenty of fish down there. There we go. Unbelievable. That's definitely a skimmer. Definitely. Just that slight adjustment, six inches, just come off so they can see it better maybe. It's away from the bottom. There we are, and we got one. Let's try it again.
As you know, I've fished two lines. One I've ground bait and dead maggot, and one I've done with the micros. And the micro line, the expander, I've seen an odd bubble come there. Nothing like the fish that are over the ground bait. And it's been hard. This session's been a hard session trying to catch fish. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the ground bait now on that pellet line, mix it up a bit. Just put So I've got two ground bait lines with dead maggot. Just see if any fishing comes on there is proving that they really want the ground bait. As you know, summertime, when if you feed ground bait and then you catch on pace, they, they, really, they really want it. So it doesn't mean they don't eat it in the winter time as well. Um, but yeah, just to try, just to see, so you guys watching this video, see if then by changing it, the fish want that ground bait. Well, I haven't really caught, just see if any fizzing um, happens there. So put some more deads in. I'll feed both lines. I'll make a ball, put it on both. I'll put a good ball, good size tangerine on the pellet line. I'll just put a small ball on my ground bait line that I've had because obviously I've, I've put it in there. I'm, I'm, I'm getting fish there um, and they're fizzing there. So there we are, two. One for the new line, a bit more, and then one for the original line. So I'll give that a go and just see if that makes that pellet line come on. So let's put a ball there. Quite interesting this to see. A little ball on the ground bait line. Right, okay, so I've just seen a couple of bubbles come up where I'll put that ground bait. It's been about 10 minutes. Let's have a drop there and just see if we catch anything over that line. Well, there we are, absolutely amazing. I just dropped that. I see a couple of bubbles. That's been probably 10 or 12, 10 or 12 minutes. Saw a couple of bubbles on that line. I just dropped in. I've got one straight away, perfectly hooked. And all I've done is I put, changed it to ground bait. And that proves to me another day may be different, but today they don't want the micros, they want ground bait and dead maggots. Look at that. But they are absolutely freezing. It's like holding the block of ice. So let's try that again. actually fizzing on it now that's unbelievable unbelievable yeah, little mirror cut but I won't put any more feed in I'll just go back on that line again just see what see what happens there you are nice little mirror when I hooked him he felt just like a decent skimmer come in because everything's well balanced if I was abrupt with it and I've got real strong elastic on line, I'll start yanking. They will fight more, but they're very cold to fish. Very cold. But unbelievable, that just transformed that peg from nothing and they're, they're bubbling on it now. Well, I've not shot this might be a carp again. 
but uh, oh, I think it is. I think it is. Let's just get that in there. Yeah. Well, I think we'll get this fish in. We'll maybe finish on this. There's just too many carp about now. But what is interesting though, I changed that line from micro pellets to ground bait and it was like flicking a switch as you've seen. I've had four, four or five skimmers on that line and I've caught a couple of carp on there, but amazing. I'll get this in and I'll have a little chat with you. There we are, lovely common to finish on, although that isn't what we've been after, but I think I've proved a point. Unbelievable how fit they are. Look at him, beautiful fish to finish on. Let's put him in the net. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've fished two lines as I said I would. My insight in how to work it out what bait would be best. I fished a ground bait line to my right and to my left I fished the pellets with expander. Fish for probably two hours. Caught a few skimmers, a few little roach on that line. Had a couple of carp. I think I had one small carp, had a tench and one little roach. And then a few more skimmers on the ground bait line. Nothing on the pellet line. I saw an odd bubble come up, but it was fizzing where I was fishing over the ground bait. The fish wanted the ground bait. And just a little trial, like I said to you there, just getting towards the end, going back a bit. I'll put some ground bait in there just to prove that they want the ground bait. Within 10 minutes of putting that ball of ground bait in there, there was fizz in there, I caught two skimmers, a couple of roach, I know I had a couple of carp there, and I've probably caught more carp than um, skimmers, but just showed by changing it, putting ground bait there instead of micros, they wanted ground bait. There's fish there. I mean, the commercials are full of fish, but it's just what they want on a day. Another day, it may be different. Maybe the micro pellets and the expander will work better than the ground bait. But that is how I find out, if I go for a trial session, what will work. And if it's during a match and I'm still not sure, I'll do two lines. And whatever I catch on straight away is better, I'll change like I did there, that line. So I've got two lines the same. What's working? It's worked for me and maybe it'll work for you. There we are. Fantastic day. Lots of carp and lots of skimmers. But it was very, very interesting. And I really enjoyed it. Now let's get these back in the water. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the bank.